Okay, welcome to Mind's Eye Mathematics. And this video is going to talk about some starting activities for students that struggle with numbers, um, just even knowing numbers one to 10, so not having those images in their minds. Um, one of my favorite tools are Cuisinaire rods. So you're just gonna to wanna to play a few games um, to introduce this uh, um, manipulative. And basically, uh, the reason why Cuisinaire rods are so great is because they, um, it's, it's not a quantity so much as it is a distance as far as number goes. And so this stops students from counting by ones, which is often the biggest issue um, and, and the thing that's stopping a lot of students uh, from developing that number sense is because they count, they're constantly counting and they're really dependent on counting by ones. And so this, this, these manipulatives will um, stop the student from doing that. So the first activity with the Cuisinaire rods is to just have them build whatever they want. And as they build whatever they want, they're going to start noticing a few things. So they're gonna start noticing that the rods of the same color are this also the same length. And they're gonna notice that some are longer and some are shorter, okay? And that's really the purpose of the first activity because we're wanting to make math an enjoyable experience um, as well as picking up some patterning that's going on. So these first activities are all focused around enjoying but also noticing. Um, so that's the first task is just playing with them. The second task is you're going to ask them, you know, ask them some questions like, what did you notice? And, you know, they should describe what we just talked about. So then the next thing there we're going to ask them to do is, can you put them in order from smallest to largest? Okay. And it's going to be a bit of trial and error. I mean, I happen to know the colors, so it's going to be really quick for me because uh, I know which colors to pick out. So it's not going to look like this when they do it. But let them struggle and try and figure out. So maybe pull out one of each color or get them to pull out one of each color and then have them build. So their stairs should look like this. Okay, and, and then I go, you know, oh, that's really interesting. Um, and we can start noticing some other things. So like how many, um, what's the difference between the rods? Okay, and you know, there's basically just a difference of one white rod between each of the rods. Okay, so, um, but these stairs are important. So we're gonna put the stairs aside and I'm gonna introduce the next activity. So we're gonna leave the stairs there. So the student builds the stairs and then you, with your student, so you're gonna get the, the students into, oops, sorry, into groups of two. Um, so if it's a parent, then it's gonna be the parent and the student. And you're both going to have a one, two, three in your hand. And you're gonna put, you're gonna put your hand, so, so if I'm one student, I'm gonna put that behind my back, okay? So I'm gonna hide this. And then um, the parent, or the other student is going to take their pile and put it behind their back. So they have to, without looking, you know, one partner will say, show me the white rod. And so they have to, behind their back, feel the rods because they can't look. And then, oh, you know, so this is a pretty easy task for them. So they should be able to pick this out pretty quickly. Um, and, and then it'll be the parent's turn or the other student's turn and the student will say, or the kid will say, um, pull out for me a green rod. And so they'll have to feel the links of the rod and then they'll pull out a green rod. Okay, and or they, they might pull out a red rod instead and then they didn't quite get it and they go, oh shoot. And they just try again. So then this task, um, once this task is really easy, then we add a fourth rod. Okay, and play the game again. And um, is to, to make it a little bit more challenging. The next thing you might do is take out the white rod and add the yellow rod, okay? So you always want to have a consecutive 
number of rods. So um, you want to have two, three, four, five, or you want to have four, five, six, seven, right? So you you don't want to you don't want to do like random rods like this because then you're not noticing the same. I mean, you could maybe at the end try that, but you're really wanting them to notice this gradual stair idea. So that's uh, one of the games. Another game would be each of you have a paper bag, okay? And you're gonna take, you might wanna have a demonstration set of um, stairs um, just so that they can see it, okay? And then another set that you put into, so the whole thing, you're gonna put into uh, the bag, okay? And then you're gonna take a dice. Ooh, I forgot to get a dice, um, but I can grab one really quickly here. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Okay, a dice, uh, if you have a zero, a zero to, actually I want a zero to 10 dice, which I don't have. Anyways, you'll get the idea. So if you have a zero to 10 dice, or um, you can just, you know, have the other partner name uh, a number, um, and then you, you have to find it, or if there's an app on your phone that randomizes numbers, uh, one to 10, you could do that as well. But um, a one to 10 dice would be perfect. So you would roll, and I rolled a one. So I have to reach my hand into the bag, just with feeling only, and find a one rod, okay? If I pull out the correct one, I get to keep it, okay? So the next one was a three, so I'm gonna reach in here, and let's just say I pull out, oh, I didn't pull out a three, right? So then I don't get to keep it. I have to put it back into my bag, okay? And the idea being is you keep rolling and pulling out until you've pulled out the whole set of stairs, okay? So that's another activity, okay? And those are all activities to, um, sorry, that noise is actually my gerbil running on its wheel. <laughs> so excuse the noise. But anyways, so that's just all games to get them familiar with, um, with the rods. And I think some of them I got off of um, Dan Finkel's website for the love of math. Um, so the next activity are is this guy, these guys. So the objective with this is um, is going to be uh, getting them to notice things in groups. So once again, the typical thing for a student who struggles with number is to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And we don't want them to do that. So you want to, you're gonna show them the card and you're gonna say, what groups do you see, okay? So hopefully, you know, they can see some groups. So most students will probably start out, um, if we, most students who are really struggling will start out maybe only seeing twos. So how many groups of two do you see? Well, I see three groups of two and then one more. So then they would take their Cuisinaire rods and so they need to figure out, so that's three groups of two and one more. If the student likes writing, have them write two plus two plus two plus one equals and then figure out what that's equal to. So they might try this one. Oh, that's not quite right. So they have to go one more up. Okay, so that is equal to seven. Okay, so two plus two plus two plus one is equal to seven. Okay, you can also do this on an abacus that is grouped according to fives. So that's also a possibility where they would take two, but once again, there's that temptation then to count by ones. So, um, so this is, and then they'd, pick a different one. And I mean, ideally, you know, we want to work them into seeing, like they might not know automatically seven, but they might be able to go six, work their way up to seeing six in one, which is seven, right? 
or maybe they're just at a point where they see four and two and one. Okay, so all of those are possibilities. Okay, so there's that task. Okay, and there's lots of um, all subitizing ones, so there's different variations of, of seven. Um, and there would be then variations of, you, you start with the low numbers even, like four or five. Um, this is another uh, way of doing it too, um, where we get, this is, happens to be the five frame, okay? And just getting them to notice the comparison of, oh, there's one missing, so I know it's a four, okay? Um, is hopefully what they would notice. Um, so that might be something they could write, an equation of uh, five minus one equals four, okay? So they could write that. Sorry, I don't have a pen with me. Um, so that is one way of them noticing. The other would be noticing a group of three and a group of one, um, and then figuring out, you know, all of that's equal to Okay, so um, yeah, so by this point, they're really picking up this idea that um, I, actually I should have said that you also want to introduce the idea that this could be, could represent a one, could represent a two and a three. Um, and it's productive activity with the rods even before you maybe get into this task to actually get them to, well, how many white rods do I need um, to make a red rod? I need two, okay? And then hopefully they will use that idea, how many white rods to make a green? Hopefully they will take the two from the red and then put one more onto that, okay? So actually getting them to figure out the fact that it's three white rods to a green rod and then continue on. Okay, sorry, I should have done this before this, okay? Or this one, okay? Because you do want them to make that association of four white rods to one purple rod, okay? Because that will make then this task of pulling three and a one to equal four possible, okay? And then as they get good with the fives, then you're gonna wanna progress to the 10 frames, okay? These are images from Dr. Grayton, Grayson Wheatley's book, um, Coming to No Number. Um, so you can purchase the book. Um, or you can find images online that mimic this, okay? So with this one, we might go, he might notice, um, a, okay, well, this is a 10 frame, so 10, and there's two missing. We're missing two. So that would mean that there's eight dots, right? That would be a subtraction way of noticing it, right? Um, and that, um, they probably won't initially do that, but that's something that they could build as. Um, what they will most likely notice is a group of four, a group of four, and figure out what that's equal to, that that's equal to eight. Okay, so these are some starting activities to really get them comfortable um, with building number. So let me know how it goes.